Soak on his protection this morning. Get all the anxiety out. Because his love is, it's overwhelming. your fears and feed your doubt. No, we're going to starve our doubt and we're going to feed the love. We're going to feed what's going to be beneficial to our minds this morning. We're going to love something that loves us back this morning. We're going to bow down to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lord because he is the one that took the stripes for us. He loves you. You have no limits on you. <laughs> you have no limits of your love. You have no limits of anything that you want to bring out into this world. Be free this morning, amen. You know, Anthony's still playing because the spirit is still playing. <laughs> so much we just go by the routine. So much we just go by what the news say. And we have been programmed and controlled by fear, by doubt, by hate, and not by love. When you are love, you are willing to lay down your life. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? <laughs> we have too many Christians and not enough disciples, amen. <laughs> you got, hey, that worship was awesome. Get a man, amen. Thank you, Jesus, for the worship team. You know, they used to put the worship right on the front line before they went to war uh, back in the B.C. days. And because you have to have the right spirit before you go into anything that you do. Amen. And if you don't have the right spirit, you will lose the war. You know, so many people are so focused on the numbers of, of whatever we're doing. Focus on the spirit, and the numbers will come. And that's in your business, that's in your children's lives, that's in whatever area that you are concerned about. Listen to what the spirit of God says, amen? Well, I know that we're going to speak a message today, and amen. this message is called Take a Stand. <laughs> Take a stand for what? When Take a stand for whatever God has placed in your heart. Take a stand for God's word. Take a stand when nobody else is standing. You know, I remember, uh, who was it? Donnie McClurkin made that song. After you've done all you can, just stand. And one of the things I had to learn is standing is a verb. Mm. <laughs> it's not a noun. It's not a person. It's not a place. It's not a thing. It's an action step. From listening to the vibrations of his love, it take it allows me to take a stand. Amen. Amen. I know we was just uh, recognizing 9/11 the other day, and I was just I still remember every everybody that was old enough to remember it back then. I know some of y'all babies, but um, <laughs> I, I was in third grade. My, <laughs> well, I was my freshman year in college, and. I remember in my dorm room and, and my roommate said, man, look at this. And everybody kind of got out there, you know, in the hallways and stuff like that. And I remember a couple of these guys, uh, some of my friends, black, white, whatever, they just dropped their books and they said, we going to the military one. Bye. <laughs> and they just went off. And I was like, wow, they, <laughs> they like for real, for real. They, they just, they just going to go. They just say, hey, man, we're not talking about we're mad no more. Yeah. We're going to do something. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I just taught a, a seminar about anger. Mm. Mm. A lot of people are angry because they're not doing nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Because you're more frustrated because you're not using the gift that God has given you because the spirit of fear mm. have paralyzed you. The spirit of fear 
have paralyzed. You know, I, I used to look at like Saving Private Ryan, Ryan and how two million people stormed Normandy Beach, and mm. I'm looking at all those bullets rippling mm. through the boats. I'm like, bro, <laughs> I ain't getting out that boat. <laughs> 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 And, I, and I'm, I'm looking like, that's insane, right? As a kid, I'm looking like, that's crazy to get off that boat. Well, 70,000 people lost their lives that day. Ain't that insane? But 2 million people stormed. That means they already knew somebody going to catch it in. But is it worth it? Yeah. It was the question. Martin Luther King had a discussion with his wife after they bombed his house. Oh, baby, we can't do this no more. They trying to kill us. He said, no, nah, it's worth it. Me and my friend, Kevin, decided to, and anybody that needs to be picked up on voting day, let us know, because we have volunteered our lives to pick people up. No matter who you are, if you don't have a right, contact GFO, amen? amen. Because we're gonna use that van out there for God's purpose. For people who don't have a ride, amen. Yeah. And somebody came to me and kept like, you know, you put a <laughs> big risk going out there. You know what I said? It's worth it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Somewhere you got to take a stand. Mm -hmm. Somewhere you got to say, you know what? Okay, let me count up the cost. <laughs> let me see. Somebody at, at Gettysburg, twenty-three thousand people, Buffalo, so all of lost their lives. Because they said, no, we're not living like this anymore. Mm -hmm. But you're going to die. Yeah, well, you know what? I'm going anyway. Uh -huh. And I'm not going to allow fear mm -hmm. to make me a prisoner of the circumstances that we can do something, y'all. Yeah. But you may not go back home and see your father, though. Why are you going to fight? Why are, you gonna, why are you storming that beach? Mm -hmm. Why are you, you know, they say that when 9-11 happened, it was two guys on one plane with box cutters. And so many people go, yeah, when the, if, if I was on that plane, I would have took those guys out with those box cutters. <laughs> you know what I'm believing? It's a lot of people that just talk woof. Oh, you ain't doing nothing. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of people that I've been learning in life. No, you're scared. Mm -hmm. You ain't doing nothing. You're gonna sit down in that seat and you're gonna take it. <laughs> wow. You're gonna take what they give to you because I've learned in life, if you're not doing this in real life, uh, you ain't gonna do it here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you ain't gonna make a stand in your community, you're not gonna make a stand for your children. Mm. If you're not making a stand in your family, you're not gonna make a stand nowhere. So one of the things I've learned in life is God did not give me the spirit of fear, but the spirit of peace, love, and a sound mind. Fear is to separate people. You know, I like playing basketball, especially when I was a teenager. And just to play the devil's advocate, you know what I would do? <laughs> God forgive me, but it's a game. <laughs> Anthony, you already know what I'm about to say. I would make the people divide. Do you know why? Because a house divided cannot stand. Mm. I'm like, man, he ain't passing you that ball, bro. <laughs> what you do? I guess they think you can't shoot. Uh -huh. Yeah, when we, what? And then now you know what I'll do? Like I said, God forgive me. I will see them fight amongst themselves and cause division. Our team will even be better than them. <laughs> and we will win because I've learned something. What the enemy wants to do, he wants to divide us. He wants to separate us. I've always known this, even from a kid, it's more to be together than be separated. Yeah. Many other communities know about this as well. But somehow, some way, we get deceived to think that it's about my foe and no more. Yeah. Get out the crab mentality. Uh -huh. It's not just about you. It's about the lives that you're affecting in the future. Okay. You grab that box cutter because guess what? It, hey, we're not going to crash this into this building. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I might can take one to the neck. But guess what? It's worth it. Mm -hmm. 
What is it worth it in your life? Jesus, Paul, all these people died for the word of God. Are we willing to give our life for the word and, and our children and our children's children? Or are we just going to sit and take whatever the enemy gives to us? Any lies, any deception. I do know how fear feels like. I remember being in a neighborhood where I'm having a conversation. A car drives by two times with some of the friends I was hanging out with. One of them wasn't my friend. And next thing you know, he said, excuse me, y'all. He got a handgun right by my ear and emptied a whole clip. And let me tell you, you think you know fear? I could not move. I said to my brain, run! <laughs> I, I, it was like I had cement in my feet. I know what fear feels like. That's the reason why I always come in preaching a spirit of liberty, yes. peace. Because I never want a person to feel like I felt that day. That's how Satan makes you feel. You ain't did enough. He's the accuser of the brother. You a bad husband. You a bad wife. You a bad... No. Receive God's report. Receive what God has to say to you today because there's another report that people are responding to. And I'm like, who are you responding to? Whose report, whose report do you believe? I don't want to hear nobody talk about the blood of the lamb no more if you really don't believe in the blood. The blood. You don't believe in no blood. You believe in fear. You believe in something else that has got your heart trapped. Even if you don't do something, at least go in front of the TV and do an aerobic exercise right in front of that TV where you just march it back and forth. Don't allow this thing to kick your butt. I've always preached a message to liberate you, not to set you captive, not to make you think that you, you, you know, I heard a person say, well, if we don't vote, this may be the end. The end for who? <laughs> That's fear talk. I know all about fear talk. I know all about victory talk. Victory speaks of Jesus inside of you. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Any tongue that rises against you shall fall. Let's go to Isaiah 54. Because this is what I want you to learn. You know, at, when that 9-11 attack happened, you know, I had, we had a, a friend where me and Keisha, we visited him. Her name Diane Parker. She went down there for Broadway stuff, act being an actress and stuff like that. And she said, you know what? I ain't letting these people keep me in the house. We're going to keep on doing our thing. I did not move out to New York to keep me in fear. I said, go ahead with your bad self. <laughs> but the thing about it is, the attack was not about hitting those buildings. It's about paralyzing the city to make people not go out to even to go to the stockbroker and all that stuff. To say, no, no, we're going to make you sit here so this whole system can collapse. Because they know if things don't keep moving, it dies. If you don't use it, you what? Lose, lose it. Ain't that what your grandma said? <laughs> if you're paralyzed in fear, then guess what? I know a couple friends, yeah, man, we closing our church. I'm like, yeah, I know we closing because we're No, we closing for good. I said, wow. They're not supporting you? They said, no. But then I ride by 367 last week. <laughs> and then I see a, a circus in town. Don't support a clown more than you support God. <laughs> but I know this because a lot of people support clowns. <laughs> I know this because I see how people live. <laughs> I see what you spend things on. I see what's valuable and what's not valuable. Mm. Yeah. And when I see it and I look at it, and I say, man, 
That's my Christ. Not to beat nobody over the head, but to say that there's something that loves you more than this loves you. If nobody takes a stand, then guess what? Then that's how you really lose a community. That's how you really lose a people. Jesus took a stand for us when nobody else would take a stand for him. And he died on that cross. And because of that, guess what? We have that same spirit inside of us. Yeah. Can't you hear it? Can't you feel it? Can't you hear, I'm not going to lay down? Can't you hear, well, I'm going to still do something even if I, I'm staying at home? Can't you hear that you got a ministry birthing inside of you? Can't you hear that YouTube page breathing out of you that you should be talking about something? Like I said, I feel so sorry for my brother Chadwick because he passed at an early age. But that brother was living fearless. He said, he said, man, I don't even feel like I'm qualified to do this <laughs> uh, Jane Brown and all the rest of these kind of stuff. But he says, I'm doing it anyway because somebody died for me. I'm thinking, I'm thinking about the old actresses and actors that had to fight their way. The Sidney Poitiers, the, the people that, that had to get beat so I could be here. It's not just about you. The crabs in the barrel bucket is about, I say you don't even have to do nothing no more. You self-govern yourself. As soon as somebody gets out and say, hey, I'm going to let other people free. I'm going to let other people know that they ain't got to go through this. You pull them right back in. Not knowing that we all went together when we get out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when that brother blasted that gun by my ear, I remember I had a lawn company business. I ain't come outside for two weeks. <laughs> they was calling me up, when are we about to get somebody else to cut your grass? I said, uh, well, you just gonna have to do it. <laughs> Cause I love me. And then I heard the Holy Spirit says, no, no weapon formed against you should prosper. Come on. Do you believe it? Mm. <laughs> God, this is the real world. <laughs> oh, you don't believe it then. God, this is, listen, you ain't going to protect me from these fine bullets. Because my neighbor got shot just two weeks ago. What you, what you do about that? What do they have to do with you? Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit told me. Uh -huh. I went outside. <laughs> brother, I, I called one brother to try to cut my people grass. <clears throat> I'm taking it back over. <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> oh, I thought you was going to. Uh, nah, nah, you thought wrong, bro. Give <laughs> <laughs> my lawn services back, brother. <laughs> and I'm so glad because I made so much money out of you. What I'm trying to tell you is this. Start sowing seeds of love. Life is very simple, ladies and gentlemen. I use this click clocker. Can you see this on the video right here? Life is pretty simple. If you throw one up, this is how it happens. So if you throw fear up, this is going to be the reflector of your life. Mm. If you even throw two of them, then two go. Mm. Ain't that simple? Mm -hmm. This is the thing I've learned. What you've been putting in is what you're going to get out. Yeah. If I've been putting fear in all my life, I'm going to get fear out all my life. Mm. I had so many people come to me. <laughs> you should be mad. I said, been mad at what? At some of these, some of these kids that's 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 got their pants hanging down. I said, why well, I'm mad at them? Y'all don't want to talk. Mm -hmm. What what did I teach, Wendell? He taught them how to be victims. Ooh. They don't have no hope when they see you fold like a two dollar suitcase. <laughs> My mom and daddy don't do nothing, so why should I do anything? What's, what's the purpose? Should I do it or should I not do it? Well, 
You know, I remember seeing my father stand up to the biggest GD gang member when they was bothering me. I was so fearful of his life because I've known this guy who used to take people out in the neighborhood. Mm. I said, Dad, you can't talk to this. Don't tell me who I can talk to, he told me in a strong voice. <laughs> I don't give a blank blank. <laughs>
Life is revealed in tribulation. In tribulation, when I got fired, that's when I got to see my wife the best. Saying, we're going to get through this. Don't worry about it. When I was sick, that's when I got to see my wife the best. You see Christ the best in the dark times. Yeah. Because that's when you see the light. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and how the light shines in darkness, you remember those things. Oh, we're going to bounce back next three, four years. But now I'm going to remember things. I'm like, yeah, I remember. I remember the light coming out this and that and this and that. I remember the light. And when you remember the light and you know how the light moves, you know how darkness moves, what happens is you start counting up the cost of how you're going to choose to move your life. Because let me tell you something, my sisters and brothers. If you move towards the darkness, as soon as everything closes and you don't see nothing at all, you will lose your way. The government cannot help you. The new president or the president that be will not help you on November the 2nd. Mm -hmm. Even though we're going to get people out to vote. Mm -hmm. God has placed something inside of our own hearts to help each other. Mm -hmm. And that's what God's been waiting for. That's what the earth is mourning for. I'm waiting for a people. The Bible talks about the, the earth is mourning for the saints to stand up. To go out to the neighborhoods, to go out to Dollar Tree, to go out and say, God loves you. And to that, I'm willing for you to know this. And I'm going to lay hands on you. I'm going to pray with you. GFO is a church. I remember we went to the laundry mat one time. <laughs> Praying for people, laying hands on people. Sometimes we got to go back to the old. It's not old. It's really the same thing. It's this that Sometimes we have been adapted to the culture of the world mm -hmm. that we allow it to carve a new mind in us. Amen? Mm -hmm. You only put up, get out what you get in. Yeah. If you put fear out, you're going to bring fear in. You know, I, uh, me and my friend Darius, Keisha, I love playing tennis with them because we have a, a nice rotation. And it's, it's a nice little mix like this, right? Boom, 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 boom. I run and get the ball. Then every now and again, <laughs> I get a person to play tennis with. And they want to hit the ball like Serena. <laughs> I'm like, bruh, this certain ball. You ain't, <laughs> you ain't no Serena. You ain't no Agassi. You, ain't, this, this, you gotta learn first. They boom. And you know what happens? Even if I tap Tap it. Guess what happens to that ball? It goes back to them 100 miles per hour. And then they tell me, when do you hit it so fast? <laughs> I guess you don't know how Newton's law works. You get out what you get in. If you want a beautiful life, tap it. Give grace. Give love. See, people want forgiveness, but they don't want to serve forgiveness. You said, that's right, Brandon. <laughs> you said, you right with me. <laughs> people want mercy. People want courageous and people to be bold for them. Mm. Are you giving boldness out? Uh oh. Hey, man. Uh oh. That's good. Hello. Drop that nugget. You want forgiveness? You know, the Bible was not in the law when it says, forgive your brothers as, as he forgives you. You know why? God, if he can get it through you, he can give it to you. Come on. And the thing about fear is, it, the reason why it's evil, it don't want to give no more. Mm. It gets paralyzed. Mm. I'm stuck. I, you know, what's that, the, the, the talent said, the last talent that had the one little thing? He says, I know that you was a fearful God and, and you was a harsh God and I chose not to even do nothing with my thing. He thought that was honorable? He says, you wicked, <laughs> servant, <laughs> wicked. I said, oh, God said, what's wicked mean? I had to look it up. You know, like the candle wick? Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. wow. The candle wick is twisted with two strings. Mm. And it represents good and evil twisted together. Mm. I got the blood, but I got fear at the same time. Mm. 
Mm. I know Jesus can, but I'm also going to look at CNN at the same time. <laughs> My God. It causes wickedness. Mm. When my dad said to that gang member, you ain't going to do nothing to my son. I said, you're not thinking about the consequences. <laughs> <laughs> I know he then took some people off the block and go out in the park. Why are you talking to him like this? <laughs> pure. <laughs> Blessed of a pure in heart. For I want to see the more I see. You ain't seeing nothing. You're seeing wickedness. Because you got a double-minded. And I used to wonder, like, man, what is going on? What's, what, is something wrong with me, God? I actually believe what you say in your word. Mm. No, you ain't got the problem. It's the wicked that it got the heart entangled. Mm. Oh. I've been using this word before, uh, Jada, so. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I'm not, I'm not going to let this person <laughs> hijack my word, man. This word was in the Bible way before that. But that's wicked, too. Let's just go ahead and throw them in the boat. So, wickedness says, <laughs> I was trying to help you at the same time sleep with you. Anybody that look at that should have been throwing up. And saying that's sad because it's wicked. You know, God hates wickedness. Amen. Okay. Amen. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, God hates it because it stops you from being all that you can be. It's, it would have stopped me from cutting grass. Somebody said, you know, you, you, y'all brothers going out there taking people out to vote. And then I already got 200,000 people. Mm -hmm. I said, yeah. And I drive for a living. And 1.8 million people die in the United States from car accidents. I guess I'm willing to take that chance. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take that chance too. Mm -hmm. A 10 times more rate of me dying in a car accident. Mm -hmm. Something that I choose to do. So I'm going to do it. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to be ashamed to do it. I'm going to be picking people up to vote. I'm going to be asking, hey, y'all, did y'all vote? Get in the car. And I've done this before. And when the Spirit allowed me to downtown to go feed people and stuff like that, get in the car, drive them somewhere. <laughs> My brother Jacob helped some person out the other day, drove them two hours somewhere, <laughs> dropped them off. Wasn't that right? Yeah. <laughs> you can get robbed. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me to preach the gospel. Where in that clause did you say I was going to get robbed? Mm. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Where in the word did you hear, no weapon formed against me will prosper? Mm. Now don't get it twisted. I wear my seatbelt. <laughs> After I get off this podium and I go to Family Dollars, I'm going to put my mask on. Mm. Me and Keisha, we got life insurance. I take all the precaution. I'm going to spray this mic down. I'm going to do all the things. You know, I had so many counseling sessions in there this week. I made sure that it was far away from me. But you ain't going to stop me. Yeah. You ain't going to stop me from doing what God has called me to do. If somebody empty around the bullets by my head and me ducking from drive-bys and me Dealing with all the crap that I've had to deal with in my life, you think I'm gonna let this stop me? Come on, man. I ain't come this far to stop. Come on. I didn't, and God hasn't brought you this far to stop. Come on. Come on. Continue your journey like Nina. Continue your journey like Jacob. Continue your journey like Anthony, playing that stuff. People are getting healed listening to that music. Amen. For you to stop makes you. Think that you're not valuable. That what you have to offer isn't enough. Let me tell you. That's the reason why we don't vote. Because you don't believe you're valuable. Message. I'm trying to tell you you are. Come on, dog. And then I can get hated for telling you that you're valuable. Come on. 
Let's say that again, Lisa. Crazy, crazy, that's crazy. <laughs> I'll tell you something more crazy. I tell I told Jacob in March when my when they held my uh, NBA tickets hostage of seven hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah, right. I said, mm, you know, I, I believe God wants us to, you know, shut this church down for about three months, and we did. But then I told Jacob in March this, and you can you can testify if I have, Jake. I said, the United States is probably going to get hit the worst. And Jacob's like, why? I said, because we're born to rebel. Mm. This country started out of rebellion. You ain't gonna tell me what to do. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and then Jacob called me three months later. When? We had the highest death rate. I said, yeah, I know. I said, that's, that's why he said, yeah, you did say that. I said, yeah. But then now I see another thing happen. And I said this yesterday at the men's breakfast. I said, suicide rates. Anxiety is about to be at an all-time high. Because now our brains are fixed in a certain type of way. Now we're rewired. And now we have to do something about that too. I read USA Today. Today, more young people are dying by suicides and experts are not sure why. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> hmm, I wonder, you see, we got a stat for all these things, but what's the stat of people not been hearing the word of God the last seven months? Yeah. Message. Uh, Don't know why? Maybe because of something that you can't see. Maybe faith hits the person's heart and a community hits a person's heart and does something that you can't see. Maybe because people haven't been praying together anymore. I'm not just talking about coming to church, y'all. Y'all know we always preach we're more than a building. But if we're on a prayer line and only two people are there, what are we doing? What do we really believe? That's real. Do we really care about people? Or was this just a show? Because it wasn't to me. And we haven't dropped the ball, thank you, by the grace of God. We've been still helping members pay their bills. We've been still helping people with their mortgage. The church has still been the pillar. Just like it used to be in the 1950s, yeah. before the drug infested the neighborhoods. But you know how it infested the neighborhoods? By the mentality of, I gotta feed mines. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you're destroying this whole thing. I don't care, it's about my fault no more. Mm -hmm. And we've adopted that mentality too. Yeah. It's not drugs though, it's other things. Yeah. Anything that takes you away from building us up together. Yeah. It's destroying you. Yeah, that's real. Oh my God. That's the mission of the enemy. You know how many mergers are under siege right now? You know how many relationships are under siege right now? Because the enemy hates unity. Mm -hmm. He always has and he always will. Mm -hmm. Coming to Job. Well, you know, Job ain't nothing. He, he's always pointing, the Bible says in Revelation, he's the accuser of the brother. Same thing I used to do in basketball when I was playing the little devil. <laughs> Look, he ain't passing you the ball. He ain't the, I'm trying to make the, you know, have you seen that, that first Avengers? Where they took over the boat at the, on the sky. What was the goal? To cause division. Yeah. You're more weaker when you're separated. And the church is separated right now. A lot of the church is separated because they've been believing a lie. And the lie is this, that you can't be effective sitting on your bed. You can. You can watch. You can ask, hey, anybody need prayer? Anybody need some tissue? I've seen a person sitting on a bed being a more active person than a person come to church. Mm. It can happen. Mm. But whatever you do, don't quit. Yeah. <laughs> Quitting is not even in my DNA. Mm. I don't even understand how a person can quit when he didn't quit on us. Yeah. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. More USA Today, more young people are dying of suicide. Experts are not sure how or why. 
but it's increasing more and more in this day and age. This came out September 10th. Because they're looking and they're seeing who's gonna stand up? Who's gonna still be the person in my family that's gonna love and just gonna appreciate me as a child? Who's gonna be that person that's staying right in the middle of fear and say, I don't care what you do, you ain't taking mine. I've learned something in life. You can't control nothing and nobody, but you can't control what's you inside you and your own house. I don't know what's to come. I don't know when it's gonna come, but one thing I do know is God has over, already overcome the world. Yeah. Amen. Jesus said in John 16, 31, Jesus answered him, do you not believe? You know, I used to see Jesus say this so many times, yeah. but now I gotta get it. It's a simple question. <laughs> he says, do you not believe who I am and what I sent you of you and, and us to do on this earth? Do you believe or do you not believe? It's the question. Now check this out. Indeed, the hour is coming. Yes, has now come that you will be scattered each to his own and will leave me alone. And yet I am not alone because the Father is with me. These things I have spoken to you that in me you may have what? In the, in the world you will have tribulations. But be of good cheer for I have overcome the world. Man, that's how I know Jesus is not from this planet. <laughs> because he says, look, Peter, I know you say you got my back, but you don't, bro. <laughs> y'all about to be scattered. <laughs> but even as y'all running away from me as disobedient servants, guess what? Have peace. peace. He said, even though I know you're going to mess up, yeah. you know I'm bringing it back home, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's only going to serve with the grace. Yeah. Don't get it twisted. Even though they scattered and ran. He said, don't worry, y'all. When you do it, <laughs> when you leave it, make sure you tuck your bed. Make sure you set your alarm clock. And when you wake up, forgive yourself. Uh, <laughs> Woo! He's a good God! Yeah, yeah, this yeah. is the reason why I serve him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he's merciful. Oh, because he's gentle. Jesus said that, and guess what? He got his life back. Oh, Jesus. <sighs> Jesus. He sowed peace in the midst of chaos. Come on. Yes, yes, come on. But then that's what I'm saying. That's what he's telling us to do. In the midst of chaos, don't let your heart be what? Trouble. He would not say, don't let your heart be troubled if you can't. Mm -hmm. He ain't lying. I have a choice. To not let my heart be troubled by what I see in my eyes, but what I listen to. He says, when you get scattered, mm -hmm. don't trip off of it. Mm -hmm. Stay in peace, y'all. Mm -hmm. This is my last scripture. 2 Timothy 2.13. If we are faithless, read that last part for me. He remains faithful. I'm going to say that again, because some of y'all... Don't understand how this works. If he, if we are faithless, he remains faithful. He remains faithful. That's why when you say, oh yeah, God is still on the throne, not because you've been a good boy <laughs> or a good girl. <laughs> God is still on the throne because he is still faithful. God is still on the throne because no matter what you do, he is still going to be God to those who obey him and believe him. That's so when I see preachers manipulating people, I'm like, uh, you ain't got to do that, bro. God is still on the throne. <laughs> Don't get into the flesh. Tell them the truth in love, but don't manipulate nobody. What you do is you speak the truth and you let them decide. I've heard some people preach some, and me and Keisha, we look on Facebook like, that ain't a God. 
Hmm. Listen, the church scattered and Jesus was still on the throne. Mm -hmm. So what are we preaching today? Um, maybe to be more like Christ. When you're like Christ, you'll be able to say, but see, there's two conversations going on here, right? When Jesus told them, don't worry, you're going you're gonna to be scattered, you're going to be busy this. He is feeding them. When I'm telling you to be like Christ, I'm telling you to get into the leadership role. Who is the leader here? Jesus. Jesus was the one saying, when you scatter, you know, don't trip. Have anybody scattered in your family away from you? <laughs> Have anybody ever done you wrong? Do like what Jesus said. Hey, don't worry about it. I already knew it was about to happen anyway. But when you do it and you come back, only got loving homes open for you. I had somebody that owed me a lot of money to contact me. Man, I'm sorry, bro. I've been dodging you. I said, don't worry about it. <laughs> I love you anyway. You can't take that away from me. Love is a choice, y'all. And it's a choice that he first gave to us. So we can give to others. I wish, I just, well, no, I just wish people forgive me. Are you giving it? Mm. Are you living it? Because, mm. like I said, it's more caught than talk. When they see you living that life, then guess what happens? That means you actually believe in forgiveness. You don't believe in giving forgiveness because you can say the word forgiveness. You believe in forgiveness because it's your outpour of your heart. Amen. The action steps is what we need to see now. The helping people that can't help themselves is what we need to see now. Yeah. We see, man, today more than ever, people just need Jesus. I know they do. But they don't just need Jesus. They need to receive his life. He says, unless a man is willing to die and lay down his life, he don't even know love. <laughs> we don't even want to lay down a payday, man. We don't even want to lay down a, 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 a sacrifice that's going to make us all united together. Sometimes I even have to do a heart check of what do I really believe? And that comes especially when you, you know, when you get fired off a job or mm -hmm. a sickness comes upon your life. You know, a lot of people caught corona that I know. Mm -hmm. I hope you're not believing that God gave it to you or God has abandoned you because he hasn't. Thank you. Come on, bro. Thank you. That's the word. Yeah. That came from man. Yeah. This is not a pandemic. This is a pandemic. Oh, to put you in fear and bondage. Yeah. Uh -oh. And it's working for some people. I'm like, wow, that's amazing. <laughs> More power to you in Walmart. I'd be like, ah, what do you believe? What do you believe? You know, my mom used to challenge me like that, and it used to get me upset sometimes. You know why? Because I know I would be lying to myself. <laughs> And Miss Sharon ain't gonna let me live in a lie. <laughs> That's a fact. It, ain't that right now? <laughs> and when fact. she gave her testimony, when she said that to everybody, I ain't gonna say it, but you already know. It was real, right? Real. They, they, she gonna question your heart. What do you believe? Why you don't wanna use your gifts? Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> Right, Mom? Either I can submit to God's love and say, you know what? I have been disobedient, God. I'm submitting to you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. I'm giving you back my life. Mm -hmm. Or you can keep up the front. Mm -hmm. Well, you know what? Uh, stop rationalizing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the rations of lies are getting in your way. <laughs> Bar. Whose report 
Will you believe? We shall believe the report of the Lord. We sung that as kids, right? Remember that song, Jacob? <laughs> You know what's hard about believing the report of the Lord? It go against the masses. Come on. It gets people crucified. Mm. It gets people like Dr. Martin Luther King shot in the head. Now he can't raise his daughters and wow. sons. Come on. Love is long suffering, y'all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I remember me and Jacob when we was kids. <laughs> we were selling cell phones. Well. <laughs> Huh? I'm, I'll say it like this. We would sell it, Sam. We learned that we were scamming people into cell phones yeah. by some hustlers that came to the church. Yep. You remember that? Yes, all right. They told us to... They told us this. If you sell, if you, if you have people sign this paper to get a free cell phone, that if you do this, We'll give you $100 a day at this expo we was at. Mm -hmm. I don't want to shout out the expo. The expo was good. It's, it was just the people that came into our church that corrupted our young minds as teenagers that did that to us. It was bad. So I had people sign this paper. Hey, hey, you know what? I'll give you a dollar if you sign this paper because I'm thinking in my mind, mm -hmm. hey, shoot, forget this. I'm going to get $100. Mm -hmm. I, and there was a lot of my friends. My, one of my friends, Dante, he looked in my face, he said, Brandon, I can't do this. You know, he passed away now. I said, why? I said, bro, we gonna get a hundred bucks. He said, because it's wrong, bro. And they fired him. He sold seven phones. They could have gave him $70. But then the next day I came back. <laughs> Jacob, did you make that second day? No, I wasn't there the second day. <laughs> a lot of people didn't make the second day because they were morally right. I had 10 more people sell, I got my hundred. <laughs> And then the next day, I was trying to, you know, give people money so I could sign this paper. This one lady came to me and said, what are you doing? I said, yeah, I'm selling, I heard, you can get this free phone. She's like, free? She read this paper, and she read it, and she read it. She said, son, you are putting people in a permanent five-year contract that they don't even know. This is not free. You know, I ain't even read the thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just collecting about $300 right now. <laughs> but I learned something. My friend Dante was right for going home. Mm. Jacob was right for not coming back. Mm. Just because I got more money didn't mean I win. Mm. I was hurting people. Yeah. Good. You can be lying to people and hurting people at the Come same on, time. Mm. Yeah. That's so good. Keep the truth with me. Keep it a bang with me. At least don't lie to me. And think that I'm doing something when it's really evil. Wow. That's good. I say all that to say this, y'all. Walk in the truth. Walk in wisdom. Put your seatbelts on. Be precaution. Let the Spirit lead you. If you have health issues, stay at home. But don't stay in fear. Did you hear me? Because I want this to be a condemning message. Yeah. I want this to be a liberating message that you still matter. Because just like I told Jacob how we're going to be number one, like I predicted, I see something else coming in the spirit. We're going to be number one in suicide, anxiety, and depression if we keep this pattern of fear. Come on. Come on. And it's coming. The thing about it is you ain't going to be able to see this one because it's not a virus. It's a spirit that has grabbed the hearts and minds of people all around this country. Or, or do you think this the racial war is just blowing up and all the tension is blowing up just for nothing? No, it's not for nothing. It's because people have not been truly connected to the word of God with the church family. And when I say church, listen, we are all the church. We are a brick that makes the church. The church is the preacher, the teacher, the evangelist, the pastor, the event, and the, and, the, and the apostle. That makes the church, the Bible says, in the correct definition. 
Don't separate yourself. That's what the enemy wants. Stay connected. Read the newsletters and all the stuff we're still giving out. Still know that you play a big position even at your house. Hey, Pastor Wendell, is there anybody? Hey, I ain't worried about nobody. I'm, I'm just worried about mine. That's what the enemy wants. He wants you to be crabs in the bucket. He knows that we're stronger together. He loves you. And this is the message of truth. Because like I said, the spirit where I see coming, oh man, so much anxiety. And you can ask Keisha, I haven't, I haven't counseled more than I have now ever in my life. Because we're about to see the aftermath of fear. You see all the violence that's going on? The shootings, the it's, it's getting crazier and crazier. Because nobody will make a stand and say, you know what? No. We're not gonna, we're, 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 we're supporting the things of God now. You're not gonna make, you're, gonna, you're not gonna distract me. <laughs> I mean, I know it's good to watch basketball, but listen, don't get distracted, man. Listen to your family. Pray with your loved ones still. You remember that thing called fasting? <laughs> remember that thing called connecting and checking up on people? Some people have been slowing up and some people have been sewing up. Don't, don't slow up, man. Don't let fear paralyze you to the point where you don't even feel like you're valuable anymore and you take your life. I was just listening to Dak Prescott and <laughs> Skip Bayless, old crazy self. Tell my son, well, you shouldn't be this. You know, his brother took his own life, his mother died, things are happening. But it should be the body of God checking up on him. We should be checking up on each other. <laughs> you know, when Cain killed Abel, he said this <laughs> to God. <laughs> Am I my brother's keeper? <laughs> like, what they got to do with me? That's their problem. That's what Satan wants. And we use, <laughs> am I my brother's keeper as a, like a slogan. That was a slogan from a murderer. <laughs> from somebody that I don't even care what my brother is lying right now. I can't stand him. I'm moving on. No, he wants us to be together. When we or faithless. Guess what, y'all? He is still what? Faithful. That means that Roma can't stop us. Why? Because we serve a person that's faithful, not faithless. We have been faithless when we didn't know who he was. But when you know who he is, then your heart can persuade it. Then you want to be just like your daddy. He's called you not to stay down here anymore, but to rise up to where he is. As he is, so are we in this world. Amen. So are we going to make a stand or not? Are we going to stand for Christ or stand for fear? It's no place I'd rather be.
And if you haven't had the opportunity to know this person that we've been talking about today, that set the captives free from Niners life, from Marine life, from 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 Miles life, from Lisa's life, from all all of y'all. If you don't know that person, we're talking about our Savior, our King of King, our Lord of Lord, the person that's covering us right now. And we want to introduce you to. And the only thing you have to confess with your mouth, not like a bird where you just repeat something back, but just say, Jesus, I want you. I love you. And I receive you, Jesus. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. And I give them to you. You are mine. And I am yours. In Jesus' name. Amen. That's all. That's as simple as it. To receive his life is to receive love. He talking about fearless. <laughs> we look back at the cross and say, this is what we represent. We represent love, y'all. We represent truth. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Is there not a cause? for us to get excited about what God is doing in our life. You know, I said, you know, and you're going to see depression and all this other stuff rise up, anxiety, and we're going to take the number one spot. But then I see another, I see, I see another people. But they're going to profit more out of this physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually more than ever before. They're going to make investments. They're going to capitalize in the moment. <laughs> they're going to listen to what God told them to do in these secret places. And they're going to come out ten times stronger than they ever have before. And this has always been in history. At the men's breakfast, we were talking about Moses sent twelve spies to the land of Canaan. Only two people said, we can go. The ten, the masses of them, most of them, no, we can't go. Guess what? Joshua and Caleb were like, okay, we're going to go one day. <laughs> As they got older, here we go again. Here we, let's go into the land of Jericho. Oh, we ain't going to send 12 spies. <laughs> we only sent two. My hypothesis of this is this. I just need the people that believe. <laughs> Come on, y'all. Right. Come on, y'all. Come on, I know that's right. I just need, I just need one to believe. That's all you need. You know the wealth of the sinners laid up for us. I you just need one person to believe. We was raising little chump change for this bus outside. And then one person say, here, I want to donate $8,000. And you don't need anyone. <laughs> I wanted to go into the schools and preach the gospel in the after school clubs. And a person donated one million, uh, a quarter of a million dollars for us to do it. Before I even knew this brother. He said, do you like teaching kids? I said, yeah. I've been praying about going into the schools. I'm already talking to him about drugs, but I can't talk to him about Jesus. He said, I'm going to have you go into the school for the next three years talking to them about Jesus. I said, where do I sign up? I've been praying for this anyway. That's all it needs one. I love that message you preached last week, Miles, about the catapult. <laughs> Think about the catapult. It only takes one rock. It only took one rock to knock out the light, put his butt down. But guess what? That's, you know what I love about God? <laughs> the Bible says David had three more smooth rocks down there. Just in case I miss your butt. I got another round for you. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Just in case. I miss you. I got three more for your forehead, devil. Have some of us missed it sometimes where we was really doing something by fear 
and we swung and missed, guess what? It's another rock on the ground. <laughs> Pick it up. Slam that thing. Knock that devil out. Amen. Amen. Amen.